everyone. Welcome to Word Funk. I am Leon Thomas. With me is Johnny Maloney and Austin Yorsky, the three amigos, the three musketeers, the three tops if one of them died in a car fire. Uh, today we are going to talk about E3 and, and some other things, but first I, I just want to uh, inform uh, the world uh, that I did not go to jail. Uh, I am still here, not in jail. Uh, someone just tried to coerce me into a crime about about a few minutes before the, sh- the show started. Um, it wasn't me, for the record. Yeah, yeah. Oddly enough, it was not Austin. I am taking the fifth on this one. Yeah. Um, what, what happened was this. Um, I was in an elevator uh, at the hospital, and I was, I was going down, and uh, there, was this, uh, there was this guy in the elevator with me, and he says, um, yeah, are you leaving? Because I, I hit one, you know, the first floor. And I said, yep. And he says, I heard that. And I, I just started shrugging. I'm like, yep. And I, I thought that was going to be the entire exchange, and that was going to be all that he and I ever said to each other throughout the entire course of both of our lives. But he had another idea. Uh, as we got off uh, on the first floor, he says, ma'am, you wouldn't believe it. There's, like, this lock on the tire of my car. And in my head, I'm like, oh, you know, a police boot. Um, and he says, yeah, there's this lock on the tire of my car, but I put it there. I put it there, you know, to protect my car. Uh, but it's the damnest thing. I lost the key. And in my head, I'm like, this sounds like a scam, but it could be on the up and up. Even so, I don't want to deal with this guy right now. I want to go home and podcast. Um, so I said, um, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I can't help you because I, I mean, I don't have tools, so I couldn't possibly get, you know, the lock off. Um, and he says, yeah, yeah, this mechanic said he, he would charge me $25 to take it off. And I said, oh. And he says, and he pulls out a $20 bill, and he says, if you can get, like, some wire cutters or a vice grip or something to get this off my car, I'll give you $20 right now. And I looked at him, and what I wanted to say to him was, you must think I'm an idiot. You must think I'm just completely gullible. I li- I'm, I was born in Baltimore. You think this is the first time I've ever been tried to have been coerced into a crime? Uh, people are, are trying to scam me every single day of my life. I have people knocking on my door asking to take a look at my um, gas bill with all of my information on it when clearly – People who work at Baltimore Gas and Electric don't need to do that. And you don't have ID, so I have to deal with this kind of stuff all the time. But I didn't want to say that to him. I said, I don't have tools for that kind of thing, which is true. And I said, I'm sorry. And I started to walk away. And he says, well, oh, you just want to get rid of me, man. Well, you know, sometime in your life you're going to need help. And I just turned back to him, and I, and I don't normally get mad. I started to think, like, even if this is on the up and up, he's being really rude to me right now. I just, I'm, I'm not a mechanic. I don't know how to do this. I said, you don't need to talk to me like that, man. You don't need to talk to me like that. I just don't have the ability to help you. You don't need to do that. And then he just says, oh, okay. And he walks away. And security comes up. And he's like, do you know that guy? And I said, no. And, he's, and he walks off after him. And I got the hell out of there. So, yeah, someone just tried to get me uh, to illegally remove a police boot from his car. Um, apparently this guy, I, I can only assume this guy has just been riding the elevator up and down in the hospital <laughs> for hours trying to get someone to be gullible enough to do this. Um, I was not going to be him, so I, I got out of there, and I'm home now and quite safe. And that is my story. That's the closest I've ever come, become to committing a major crime. That's the closest? Yeah, I mean, what else would I do? I don't know. Did you ever get into the close proximity of alcohol before you were of age? That has to be closer. Well, no, I I, I have not. But but, all, but but that's not a. I don't know if that's a major crime. It's not. Well, it's a crime. It, have you ever jaywalked? Yeah, but again, that's not a major crime. I think Leon's secretly a crimer. He's a crime have, doer. Have you ever embezzled <laughs> hundreds of thousands of dollars from a federal institution? Uh, I have not. That would be major. Are you sure? I'm almost positive. I'm almost positive I've never done that. Not consciously. Not. Have only. you ever opened your neighbor's mail even accidentally? No. Have you ever ever worn red and pink in the same outfit? That, well, that would be a fashion crime, but um, I don't really wear uh, bright colors, so no. 
<laughs> I wear I wear mostly black and gray and dark blue. I don't know Yorski. I think he's clean. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do a cavity search to be sure. All right. Well. <laughs> Squat and cough. You know, I like how how quickly I acquiesced to that. <laughs> I, was, I, I wasn't I wasn't hesitant about it at all. I was like, well, you know, I guess. I mean, since we're here, um, but I like ca- to think we're just persuasive. <laughs> okay. Um, well, uh, anyway, uh, cavities or, or otherwise, um, uh, that was my story. And uh, now we can actually talk about something that uh, affects other people besides uh, myself, and that's E3. Austin, you uh, followed the news about E3 even more so than myself or Johnny, so why don't you uh, take it away? <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, um, last year, if you listen to the BT podcast, you know we did a quick rundown of all the conferences and discussed the games that interested us most. I think we're going to do that again. Uh, there was four main ones the first day, and then Nintendo had their digital event today. It is Tuesday currently. Uh, so real quick, let's just knock out the ones that were light on content. Uh, EA showed up just not ready to present, really. They didn't have anything particularly interesting. Sports games, which that's fine. That's I what they think, do. I think they were ready, Austin. I just think that they were ready for basically shit. They were pre- <laughs> they were well prepared to fail, is what you're trying to say. More or less, yeah. Like there was a lot of pomp and circumstance because I did, you know, I did see some of the like their short documentaries, which mm-hmm. obviously took a lot of money to hire like film crews and talk to people and edit and score and shit like that. So they were like, they were on the ball. It's just they were on the wrong ball. You think? Because look, the two most interesting games to me that they brought were Mirror's Edge 2 and the new Mass Effect. But they're they're both in planning stages. They weren't ready to be on stage, I don't think. They don't seem to me to be projects that are E3 worthy at this time. Uh, besides that, they have a couple other things. I mean, Dragon Age Inquisition looks fine. That That's at a reasonable, you know, level of completion to show off. Um, the Sims 4, that's fine, but we already knew those existed. So they they really didn't bring us anything of substance, is just, what I'm saying. I just assumed there would be a new Sims, because there's new Sims stuff in, in terms of brand new games and offshoots and expansion packs like every other Tuesday. So, you know, that that's not that's not too surprising. I liked I, I my history with The Sims is always buying the next one, playing it for two weeks and then just murdering everyone and never playing it again. I always I always get it though. Um I am curious, I, it's a vicious cycle. I know. It's, it's it's a vicious cycle and I am vicious while playing it. Um but yeah, I, I just did I did have one question. The new Mass Effect um, mm-hmm. It is my understanding, and having never played, uh, I could be wrong here, but it is my understanding that so much of their world is destroyed at the end of the third one. How is the fourth one a direct sequel, or is it a prequel? Or, or... No, Leon, what you don't understand is is that the new Mass Effect takes place in completely different parts of space, which look way different than the other parts of space. <laughs> I, I see. They're distancing it from the um, the Shepard trilogy, if you will. It's new characters, new story, new circumstances. I don't think they've nailed down a timeline yet, so it could be before or after, and they'll just not address anything from the games they've released already. So it's so, so it's like Star Trek. There's it's the same universe, uh, and some of the elements may be the same, but it's a completely new cast. Totally, I, I, totally different regions of space. The space <laughs> is going to be way different. Here's the thing, Leon. I wish I had more information. All they did was they showed, like, an out-of-focus picture of a dude standing with his back to a camera, and they're like, we're working on Mass Effect. <laughs> anyway, next next presentation, like, that's part of what bothers me, is the only games that I'm interested in they didn't have anything to say about. Um, Mirror's Edge 2, they just showed some gameplay that looked identical to the first one, and we're like, we're working on it, guys. It's going to be good. And then they moved on. So um, the only other thing that worth even touching on is Battlefield Hardline, which leaked, like, weeks ago. Um, so I already knew that existed, but it was... I like there. how you say leaked, as if, like, they weren't deliberately just, like, being like, oh, no, look what I dropped. <laughs> I, better pi- I better pick that up again in a day. Yeah, oh, I mean... No! That's that's relatively common, but who knows? I don't have any confirmation of that's what happened this time. I'm just giving them the benefit of the doubt. Um, I mean, it looks like a game where you shoot dudes, which is fine. There are games for shooting dudes, although there is some of the troubling subtext about, um, you know, people 
in L.A. having gunfights right now. I don't know if you guys were following the real world recently, oh. but not something I'm super comfortable with playing uh, these days. Who knows? Um, Austin, I'm somebody sh- was shot in Vancouver just this morning. Yeah, are they making a game about it? I never want to play a game with guns ever again. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that there can be no more dude shooting games. I love dude shooting games. I've shot more dudes than anyone has ever shot dudes. I am the shot dude shooter dogs. general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I just it didn't do much for me. I guess. Yeah, I yeah. I, I can see how that would be a little insensitive. But on the other hand, you're Electronic Arts, and you've spent like fucking you know thousands of dollars getting your E3 presentation up. Are you going to be like, ah, uh, that would be insensitive? Or are you going to be like, fuck the poor people? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's, there's a conversation to be had about the politics of hardline, but that's not for the today. Next next week, maybe. But don't week. you remember when you could pre-order Medal of Honor Warface and get a gun? Medal of Honor Warface. Was it Warface? I, 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 thought, there is, I thought it was Battlefighter. There is a game called Warface, but the one he's thinking of is Medal of Honor Warfighter. I'm pretty sure it was called Space Fighter. <laughs> yes, yeah, starring Andross from Star Fox, the giant face. Um, the other quick uh, conference to get through is Ubisoft. They showed off everything we expected. Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, Just Dance, seen it all a thousand times. Nothing super new. They showed the crew. Their, their big racing game, we've seen it. The only surprise was the new Rainbow Six, because the last time they showed it, it was called Patriots, and it was a story-focused single-player game. Now this seems to be a multiplayer, cooperative-focused game called Rainbow Six Siege. Did you guys see any footage of that? All I heard about the new Rainbow Six is that, and I could be totally wrong here, but someone said there was something horribly insensitive about it. I just... It's... You play Capture the Flag with a woman. Right, right. Uh, yeah, Anita Sarkeesian said something about that on her Twitter, and I was just sort of blown away. And I'm like, is that for real? And uh, yeah, I guess it is. Thank you for confirming that really frightening thing to me. Yeah, and someone's uh, Twitter was, was blown up about it. It was like starring the woman as the hostage. It wow. was, it's, it's uh, once again, how uncomfortable. You, how do you know it's not starring the hostage as the woman? <laughs> Johnny, I love how much you add to these conversations. You're just well, my favorite person. You know, I've, I've got to do something while I'm here. I can't just be the good looks. <laughs> um, but that's, that's totally what's... useless on a podcast. Why would you be the looks on a podcast? <laughs> well, you could make the title card image just your face. Just have a really big, uncomfortable close-up on Johnny's face. <laughs> <laughs> that is so going to be the title card this time. <laughs> Um, oh wait, there's one more thing from the Ubisoft conference. Is the World War One game of Valiant Hearts? Did you guys see that? That, made, that? that gave me feels. I actually had, had not heard about this at all, but the fact that there is a World War One game is actually kind of interesting. Sons it of ha- bitches used a dog against me. Mm, cartoony art style, sad dog. That's gonna that's gonna do well, I think. Yeah. But um, we did know that existed already. We just didn't have much of, of it. But I think uh, Rainbow Six was the only actual reveal. Uh, yeah, Aisha Tyler showed up to host that press conference again wearing a, a girl boner shirt, as she does. Um, what? Wait, what? What yeah, happened? I, you know, I, I know, Aisha I know, Tyler. I know, I, know, I know who she is. She's the uh, She plays a character on Archer. I, I, just, I, I don't know what you mean by... <laughs> a few years ago, a few years ago, she hosted the the Ubisoft E3 conference, and it was widely regarded uh, amongst fans and people in the industry as an absolute and utter disaster. Uh, and one of the well, at one point in time, like it was really over rehearsed and really like flat and just uninteresting and terrible. And at one point in time, they finished a trailer, and she walked out and was like, "Wow, that gives me a girl boner," and everybody was just like, "What? What?" <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. So she owned it. I, I, so. <laughs> she's taking it back from the man. It's it's a thing. I'm not super fond of her um, hosting duties, but I think she's a funny person. So yeah. she's actually really cool on Archer. Um, and I remember when she was she when she was the host of uh, of the soup um, years and years ago um, when it was uh, it was different. Uh, she was actually good on that. So she's not incapable of being. Uh, a host, I, it just sounds like not so much at E3, 
I don't know. I, also, well, I really like the essay that she wrote in response to the criticism that she got from that. Oh. Where she was like, she wrote an essay about how, you know, she's been playing video games ever since she was, you know, yay high. And for those who can't see me, um, because you're not peering through the window of my apartment, my hand is quite close to the ground. Or at least the floor. So it's indicating a relatively short young age. She basically called out the sexism and accusations that she's not a real gamer and everything. It was cool. I, I agree with Johnny. That was a cool takedown. She seems like an awesome person. I just yeah. find her um, presentations at the Ubisoft things cringy, personally. But, you know, different strokes and all that. Um, moving on. I, I just want to say one thing quickly before we move on from, from Ubisoft. Was okay. that I, every goddamn year they get me, and I'm almost determined not to be sucked in by Assassin's Creed this year. Yeah, the Assassin's Creed Unity takes place during the French Revolution, and it looks really Assassin's Creed. I don't know why everyone was so excited. They're like, oh, this is next gen. This is Look at all these graphics. And I was like, that just looks like Assassin's Creed. I know. I'm, <laughs> determined, I'm determined to maintain that standpoint. So yeah, I, I went on a little thing on Twitter because all the four playable assassins were men. And I was like, the most famous assassin of the French Revolution was a woman. She stabbed that dude in his bathtub. There's a painting of it. It's super famous. How is that How is that not what this game is about? But presumably she'll show up. You guys know about that? Bath, bathtub stabbing? It's on my list of things to do. <laughs> I, I, I know nothing about stabs and bathrooms. Really? In you guys not history buffs? I, I, I'm sorry, what? what? <laughs> I feel like I'm, I I got lost in this conversation. In the French Revolution, right, the things people think of, you think of guillotines, you think of Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake, and then there was that famous political assassination where that woman stabbed that dude to death in the bathtub, and there's like a painting of it. Oh, okay. Now all I think about is Russell Crowe trying to sing. <sighs> I'm just, I'm totally shitting with you. I haven't even seen that movie. But, I mean... You have to have heard like him say. I haven't seen the movie either, but even I'm aware of how bad his singing is. So. I well, you know, no. I mean, there are other things that pop to mind when I think about <clears throat> the French Revolution, of course. <laughs> All right, let's move to the Microsoft conference before we bore everybody. Um, so last year, you guys remember, I was furious at the Great Microsoft job, conference. Great job, Austin. We're gonna go to the Microsoft conference because you don't want to bore everybody. Oh, here's the thing, though. They actually, they upped their game. They didn't do anything wrong, really, this year. They didn't talk about, like, any boring TV shit. They were they brought games, new games. I know, updates. but it was just like, the thing is, that they didn't knock it out of the park. It was like, it was on message. It, the, Microsoft, it, the Microsoft conference was like, oh, look, all the things we should have done. <laughs> well, they didn't bring a Halo. I mean, they brought the Halo collection of the old games, but they didn't bring the new one, which was weird. But they brought, um like, The Witcher, and they brought... Uh, the new Fable and some Dead Rising DLC, like expected stuff. But there were there were some new interesting reveals. Uh, a Tomb Raider sequel to the reboot, which isn't Xbox exclusive, but I mean they brought it, so it was it was theirs to show off, which was cool. Uh, a Crackdown reboot it looks like really robust physics, maybe like a Red Faction guerrilla style uh, city destruction. That looks super cool. And an exclusive Platinum Games game called Scalebound which I thought I would be a lot more excited for. It's like a Devil May Cry slash riding a dragon thing. Um, but they didn't show any gameplay, which is disappointing. It was just a CGI trailer of a guy wearing headphones and being, like, really smarmy. Kind of pissed me off. But, I mean, they brought games. I mean, that, isn't that what we wanted? Is, <laughs> like, you can't really fault it totally, them. It totally was what we wanted, and I'm not faulting them. I'm not saying, like, it was a, it was a far more entertaining presentation than their their presentation last year, absolutely. But, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, they weren't going all in. It wasn't like, you want games? We'll show you games. It was like, you want games? Oh, okay. We, we yeah. have some. They also, um, I guess they're rebooting slash, uh, you know, relaunching Phantom Dust, which is a super weird, obscure Xbox game. Um, but, I mean, they've done everything we've asked, right? They're getting rid of the Kinect from the X-Bone, um, like, retail SKU. Yeah. They got rid of, like, all the DRM stuff. Like, they, they've they done basically everything we've asked, so you have to give them credit. I don't want to feel like I'm being, um, you know, unnecessarily harsh on Microsoft because I'm about – to go into something that might seem <laughs> like I'm being unfair. Austin, I, I sorry to, to 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 stop you here, but 
Are you, did you just say that they're bringing back Phantom Dust? They are bringing back Phantom Dust. Do you know what that is? No one knows what oh, that is. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know what that is at all. You're an asshole, Leon. <laughs> it's a really, it's like a card game, but like with some strange, um, like, post-apocalyptic stuff. I don't really know how to explain it. Uh, it's a post-apocalyptic card game? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Wait, 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 no, hold on, hold on. Are the cards, like, post-apocalyptic, or are are there, like, two guys post-apocalypse playing cards, like, regular cards? I, they're closer to the second one. So, wait, okay. so so it's, it's, it's basically, I load up um, Solitaire on my PC, but there's a background of, <laughs> of like, of basically Mad Max. Uh, it's more like, like, more like if you bought Fallout New Vegas. Uh-huh. All you did was play Caravan. <laughs> uh, I, I know it's it's completely unfair, um, but uh, but I'm just going to take um, responsibility for uh, this right now. I'm going to impersonate the entire internet and dismiss this outright, having never played it, because that's what we do. Thank you, Leon. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm that's the thing. Quickly, I'm going to very quickly rip on Microsoft because they didn't uh, state any intentions about having a VR helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's. Oh, I want to play Phantom Dust in virtual reality. No, I'm sorry. I just like I know that's that's like you know people are like, oh, I don't think VR is as big as you think it's going to be, Johnny. But I'm like, okay, okay, that's fine. You know, it, it's it's going to be a niche like a peripheral. That's that's fine. That's cool. I'm okay with that, right? But you don't show up at like the biggest you know video game tech conference trade show in the fucking like world when your biggest fucking competitors like, oh yeah, yeah, no, we got a we got a tech demo and then like you know the fucking Oculus is there and everything. You don't you don't show up and go. We're interested in competing this in this space. You show up there and go. What VR? You, do you think they want to go up against Oculus and Morpheus? I feel like that maybe that ship has sailed and they just re- re- recognize that. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. It was going to be basically as far as I was concerned. It was going to be the point where they're punching tickets on the boat. And yeah, the fact that they didn't show up with anything, the the boat has sailed. The ball has dropped. The toast. Hit the floor, butter side down, Satan's in the room. What were you going to say, Leon? I'm sorry, I know what Oculus is. What is the other one? Morpheus? Morpheus. That's, a, that's the that's, PlayStation Oculus. Oh yeah, that's God. Sony's VR helmet. <laughs> do they all have to have ES at the end of their names? They do now. Oh, okay. Well, technically speaking, the company is Oculus. The headset is the Rift. Oh, okay. True. But we, everyone just calls it the Oculus Rift, so... <laughs> yeah. And fucking, they pulled Jason Rubin today. Did you see that? I did not. What happened? Jason Rubin's working at Oculus now, as like uh, the head of first-party development. They have a just a an insane like talent pool over there. If there was a 1990s Olympic equivalent of basketball in tech development right now, this is the dream team. It, it'll be interesting. I think it's going to do uh, things that are worth playing, but I don't think it's going to be uh, an entire paradigm shift where Microsoft will g- regret not chasing after that. You know what well, I'm saying? It, it occurred to me after the fact that it would probably be just easy for Microsoft to hand Oculus, like, fucking XD billion dollars and be like, <laughs> yeah, make a, make a fucking Xbox One version of that, would you? Yeah, just make an adapter. We'll plug it in. It's fine. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. But, I mean, the takeaway from the Microsoft thing is they showed up, they did what we asked, they had an impressive lineup of games, it was fine. They had a lineup of games. <laughs> they had something. Um, they even had a bunch of indie games, really cool looking indie games, it was good. But then Sony came along and just ruined them. They just absolutely crushed them, it wasn't even fair. That, like, was, I a, felt, that was a very targeted cannon strike. I felt genuinely bad, I was like, oh man, they, they tried their best, did you just come out and play it like that? Like, when the the Microsoft guy came out for his conference, he's like, you know, we're working on this cool stuff with our friends at Nintendo and Sony. Like, we're all here in the spirit of brotherhood. And Sony came out and they're like, fuck this shit. We're here to wreck bitches. Like, they just didn't <laughs> care. It was brutal. So they showed off um, Destiny, which is the new game by the people who made uh, Halo. And they, it's coming to PlayStation 4 first. It's not exclusive, but they're, they're selling it as if it is. Um, a big standalone DLC for... Um, Infamous Second Son, a new little big planet, 
um, Bloodborne, which is the spiritual successor to Dark Souls, uh, featuring that game's director. So it's essentially Dark no, isn't Souls. It, isn't 3. it Demon Souls? I thought it was Demon Souls. There was Demon Souls, and then there was uh, Dark Souls, and then yeah. But I thought Dark Souls was a spiritual successor to Demon Souls, but the guys who worked on Dark Souls weren't Demon Souls. So can nah. Wait, what? Does that really be the spiritual successor to a game that he didn't work on, but somebody else did that was a spiritual successor? I'm confused. Oh, dear, I've gone cross-eyed. Does that mean there's no Dark Souls 3, or...? My understanding is that uh, the Dark Souls director is not the Dark Souls 2 director, so I think Dark Souls is going to be, like, its own thing still, but this Bloodborne is more true to the, the other Dark Souls, which is a successor to Demon Souls, which is a successor to Kingsfield. I, it go, it go, there's a lineage. I was really but, into uh, Demon's Souls, but I, I just haven't gotten around to playing Dark Souls or 2, or apparently this other... God, I'm so behind. God, I gotta finish Tales of Graces F. <laughs> I, but, I played Star Citizen this week. <laughs> you flew around in space. We'll talk about space because they showed No Man's Sky. I oh. shot some shit in space. Thank you very much, Austin. <laughs> um, they showed more of the order, which is uh, oh, it looks fine. Um, they announced Dead Island Two, which I'm sure isn't exclusive, but it's being dur- Jaeger Entertainment. Jaeger, the guys who made Spec Ops: The Line. Yeah. How do they? Why? Why? Well, this is, this is an interesting, like, it's an interesting chance for them because, uh, you know, the truth of the matter is that as a game, Spec Ops The Line was, like, nothing special. Mm-hmm. It, was, it wasn't It was very interesting. It was, do you see that low wall? Uh-huh. Do you see that other wall? Uh-huh. Get behind them. Okay. Now shoot. But narratively... Yeah. Yeah, narratively it was it was it was pretty great. Like it it it, it did a very good job of 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 framing the concept of uh, um, violence in games. But so this is kind of like it's it's a weird litmus test for me. It's a weird kind of like okay, are you really a game developer? You know, can you take Dead Island, which was um, dumb and dumb and janky but fun. I guess, yeah, and can you can you make a better game out of it? You know, like, can you make it, like, is it going to be actually, because the trailer looks goofy. Like, the trailer actually looks like they know what Dead Island was. <laughs> yeah, it's much more as, representative. As opposed to the, the original trailer for the original Dead Island, which had no idea what this game was. Which I still really want to play the game based on that trailer. I would <laughs> love to play the game, you know. But yeah, do you... Do you think Dead Island 2 will be a subversive kind of take on the zombie genre? Do you think Jaeger will bring their own, you know, spin to it? I certainly hope so. There seems to be, like, at least the way that the trailer looked at it, it was this kind of weird, like, you know, Americanized corporate culture, yuppie culture, you know, like, I mean, the dude's, like, for going for a run, and you see, like, you know, like, bicep implants come falling out of his arm when he when he turns, you know? Yeah, and there's the billboard and stuff at the end. Yeah, and, and the fact that this van comes, like, plowing through nails this guy, and they're like, stop the car, dude. Whoa, check out these shoes. Mm. You know, so it, it looks like there's there's going to be a little bit of subversion in there. <clears throat> I just, um, I hope. I hope that uh, that they managed to make it work as a game because I had problems with with Dead Island. Everybody did. Yeah, I mean, if they just said, "Hey, Dead Island Two, more of Dead Island," I'd be like, "Well, I, I played that already. I'm probably gonna sit this one out." But now I'm interested. I think at least I'll give it a look. Yeah, I'll keep it on my radar. Um, another huge bomb. Grim Fandango coming to PS4 and Vita. Don't no- you talk to me! Don't you talk to me! <laughs> Nobody saw that coming. Did, did, that was crazy. How you play? I mean, have you guys played Grim Fandango? Obviously, Johnny has, right? I played it um, a long time ago. I did not complete it, but I, I remember playing it. Same here. I didn't finish it either. I was really bad at adventure games. I am cradling my two-disc flipbook of Grim Fandango right now. <laughs> So a whole new generation is going to get to play that. That's that's great. That's way more than I ever expected from a Tim Schafer announcement at that conference. Um, Magicka 2, No Man's Sky. Uh, there's a new game by the art director from um, Journey. It's called I'm, Abzu. I'm just going to be like, oh, yeah, I want me some of that No Man's Sky action. It looks great. I don't know if you guys know about No Man's Sky. It's 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 like made by like ten people, so it's indie, but it doesn't look indie. It's like a it procedurally 
generated space dinosaur thing? Not necessarily dinosaur. I mean, there were dinosaurs in the trailer. It's it's basically it's a procedurally generated galaxy is what they're looking for, mm-hmm. where you travel from planet to planet. And it's about, like, resource accruing. It's kind of like survival in the sense that Minecraft is but, about survival. But you're not it's, – it's not like, you know, upgrade your health and go to the nether and things like that. You scout planets and you can collect stuff and upgrade your spaceship and – you know, it's and it's literally like wander around on planets that have all these like weird creatures on it. Some dinosaurs, others not. Mm-hmm. And then you like fly up into space and you shoot things and you fly and you zoom and you go do a barrel roll. And it looks it believe looks it or not, you do a barrel roll. I mean, you can if you want. You don't have to. Not required. Um, so and I get the I get the impression that you and I are probably going to play the crap out of that. I I agree. If they finish it, their studio flooded a while back, but it seems like they bounced back. Yeah, Sean. No 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 no. Who, who, <laughs> one of the, one of, I'm sorry. The lead the lead developer's name is Sean. I have him on my on my Twitter, but I can't remember his last name. Um, he was like, yeah, um, studio flooded, but it won't slow down development. And everybody's like, yeah, right. And then they showed up at E3 with this trailer, and everybody was like, yeah, right. Do you also see Suda Fifty One has a new game? Another new game? I, I I did. I just learned this like minutes before we started the podcast, so I haven't even seen the trailer yet. Uh, I assume it's ultra violent and crazy. Yeah, it's super violent. It's a free to play PlayStation Four game called Let It Die, and we saw a little bit of gameplay. It looks like some kind of just you are a character and you are killing other characters. It's just like a multiplayer murder game. Wait, wait, wait! Free to play? Like if I own a PlayStation Four, I don't have to buy it? What do you? Like, That's you my understanding. There will probably be microtransactions. You'll be able to buy better like equipment and items and stuff. Oh. Probably. E3 reveal. Halitosis just announced. What? I'm sorry. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> He's just saying shit. Johnny's Twitter before E3 was the best because he was kept, he just like E3 prediction mayonnaise. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, no, no. It was the distinct odor of mayonnaise. Yeah, not even mayonnaise itself. There was. Like, I predicted dubstep. Which I think I think actually was a pretty poor prediction at this point in time. Not a lot of dubstep. We've moved past it. Now it's all like children singing haunting choirs. Yeah. Um, I'm still like I'm still on this PlayStation Four list, guys. They announced so many great games. Um, they're they're remaking the original Ratchet and Clank. They're doing a. Uh, I mean, we already knew about The Last of Us uh, at remaster, but they're bringing that and Grand Theft Auto Five to PS4, and you can import and your ex- and PC. Yeah, what a spit in Microsoft's face that was, right? You can import your Xbox 360 file into the PS4 version. What a spit! Like that was like that was Sony like standing right in front of Microsoft for like a good minute, like horking up a big loogie, and just be like, "No, no, don't move anywhere. Hold on, stay right there." And like, oh, man, that was dirty pool. They also made a joke about they're like, "Oh, we have this PlayStation Eye, which was and always has been an optional peripheral for our console." <laughs> and they looked in the camera, like just being a total dick about the Kinect. Just brilliant. Um, also, we saw a little bit of Uncharted Four, which we knew existed. Arkham Knight, which do you guys see the Scarecrow? The Scarecrow looks nasty in Arkham Knight. Awesome, and I'm so, like, I'm impressed with the scale of the city there. Like I don't know how I feel about the Batmobile, because we can already move really fast around the city. I'm probably not going to use it very much. <laughs> no, I be... I, honestly, I just, I like, fucking, like, the way he's gliding around, I'm like, fuck yeah, that's my Batman. Yeah. Um, and then they showed Mortal Kombat X, which has two or three new characters. Three new characters, really. They focused on two. But one this of them is, is just... Master Blaster. It's just Master Blaster from Thunderdome. That's just who it is. <laughs> like, yeah, that's so that's a thing. Um... So there's so, a lot of good games, a lot of cool announcements. The, really, the only failings of the conference was when they stopped for, like, 20 minutes to talk about, us. Uh, I guess, a graphic novel called Powers, and I guess they're making a TV show out of it, but I, no one cares. Powers is a great graphic novel, though. I'm just going to sure it is. there. Brian Michael Bendis, like, does good work. I, it's, I hope it's good. I have no idea what it is or why it was in the gaming conference, but it was a momentum killer, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it would be. 
because it's <laughs> like it, no, it's a slow paced like it's about it's about superhero cops basically, not not co- like superheroes that are cops, but like a division of cops that are like yeah, look after the whole sucking superhero thing. Yeah. I mean, it sounds fine. It just, it was the sore thumb at the end of the day. People were like, wow, that was nuts. What was that weird thing about the comic book? Like, everyone was a little perplexed by it. But overall, like, they slam dunked it. I didn't think um, Nintendo was even going to be able to top it. I, I don't think they did, ultimately. But I want to hear from Leon, because I know this is the one you watched. Do you want to run us through Nintendo? Because that just happened today. <laughs> Nintendo's uh, thing was actually a lot of fun. I, I I didn't watch all the press conferences, but when I heard, oh, Nintendo's about to do their uh, digital uh, press conference thing, I was like, all right, I'll listen to Reggie fils me you know, tell me things in his incredibly chunky face. I, I'll... I'll... <laughs> I'm I'm down, you know. If if Reggie's talking, I'm listening. Uh, and yeah, he actually announced a lot of cool things. Um, Yoshi's Woolly World uh, ah, is yeah. is is just the most adorable thing. I played. Um, I guess it's this, the um, almost but not quite sequel to uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn. Uh, Kirby's Epic Epic Yarn. I played it. I liked it. Um, it's so good. It's made. It's made by the same uh, team. Yeah, who made Kirby's Epic Yarn. Yeah, um, Kirby's Epic Yarn was you 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 run around and you have fun, and that's that's the game. You run around, you have fun, you solve very simple things. Um, you can't really die, but it's it's really not really about uh, about that. But it's come on, Leon. Games aren't about fun. They're about brown and gray. <laughs> it's and, very... and capturing the woman, starring as the hostage. You have to capture the woman. Um, but no, yeah, Kirby's Epic Yarn was good, and uh, I, I can only assume that. Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World will also be good. I, I can't imagine why it wouldn't be. It was a really just beautiful uh, game. And when I say beautiful, I don't mean like they, you know, the, they upped the graphics of the Wii U so much. I mean, it was like lovely. Like they actually put care into how it looks and it was nice. And Can I ask a plebeian question? I, I guess. Are we guaranteed that all of the fabrics in this game are going to be woolen, or can we expect perhaps some other natural, or even possibly some synthetic fibers? You're an asshole, Johnny. <laughs> do you know? Do you know the name of the studio who does these games, Leon? I can't remember. It's Good Feel. Oh, <laughs> how cool is that? Even that warms my heart just a little bit. Yeah, and uh, and immediately following this, they introduced us. Uh, to another game, uh, I they, they, we may have heard about this before. This is the first time I heard about it, and that's um, basically Toad has his own platformer game coming out. Oh, Captain Toad! Yeah, that was the first time we've heard about that. We had heard about Yoshi before, we just didn't know a name for it. Oh, okay, uh, but yeah, I thought it was great. It's like Toad, um, Toad finally gets the game. I guess if if uh, we had a year of Luigi, maybe this is year of Toad. Where we <laughs> just we just give. Like all the uh, supporting characters in in the Mario world, that their own game for a while, and I, I I think this one looks nice. It it basically looks how do I put this? It looks like it's a Mario game, but you're Toad, and and, and I I don't know all the details about it, but it looks like fun. Um, these are the kind of games that make me want to get a Wii U when it's time for me to buy another you know a, a current generation console. I'm still plugging away on games I still want to play on uh, the PS3. Um, but, and they also introduced, and I, I can't entirely explain this one, so maybe you guys can help me. They, they introduced action figures that will store data for your characters in Super Smash Brothers and other Wii U games. This is the Sky, this is the Skylanders syndrome. Yeah. Or Disney Infinity as well, I believe. Yep, near field communication is what it's called. It's the action figures you can buy that store character data. So let's say if I have a, you know, a character, my Mario has won so many matches or has whatever items on my figure, on my game, I can take it to a friend's house, put it on his Wii U controller, and I can play as my Mario at his house. You know what I'm saying? That's how the Skylanders works, how the Disney Infinity. Now they're getting in on it. Presumably it might be a way to deliver DLC as well. So if they're like, oh, Smash Brothers, we're finally adding Ridley. Buy the Ridley action figure and it'll work, you know? Mm. But that, that's a, a more efficient way to deliver DLC to children because they don't necessarily have credit cards to access, like, the eShop. Right. So that's my There's also the tax, 
There's also the tactile component, of course, you know, like, it's sometimes kids want to have things. I think, like, you know, everybody's ditching their stuff right now. They're like, I don't need a DVD collection. I don't need CDs. I don't need – I think the pendulum is going to swing the other the other way at some point I, in time. I think we'll get rid of a lot of stuff, but then you'll have the one or two collections that are special, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, you know, actually, um, Skylanders was uh, going to be a Nintendo – a joint project with Nintendo, but they turned uh, Activision down, like, back before it started, and that they've been regretting it ever since. This is a long time coming. This is, this is like that, that Apple Adobe... Is that, no, that's too geeky? I, I'm vaguely aware, I was like, gonna say. Apple, Apple wasn't supporting Adobe, and then, like, Flash just suddenly, like, remade the internet, oh. and Apple was, like, hat in hand. Um... We hear you guys have a YouTube. <laughs> I was going to say, when Nintendo rebuffed Sony, so they went off and made the PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. That, that too. But yeah. Uh, also in uh, Nintendo's conference, we got a uh, a very sh- a short look, but uh, a, a, a nice uh, glimpse of what will be the new Legend of Zelda game. We don't have a title um, just yet. But what we do know about it is that... Do you think it's going to have Legend of Zelda in the title? <laughs> Johnny, shut up and look at the picture I put in the chat while Leon talks. I did! I already looked at the picture. It's okay. awesome. It's beautiful. Um, basically, what we saw of it was a background, and then we saw a brief uh, fight sequence in which uh, Link takes out a uh, bow with like sort of some sort of crazy contraption thing and fires at a bad guy and Link is wearing blue instead of green and I, I guess that's fine. I'm not I'm not so much a a uh, Legend of Zelda purist that he must wear the appropriate colors. Um but uh yeah, it is it is pretty um as expected. All we know um about this new Zelda is that apparently you will be able to explore in ways you have not been able to explore in the past. I don't Except entire... for in other games, like Skyrim. It's the Zelda oh. Scrolls. Yeah, but it's it's Zelda, so it's better. Um, so, yeah, apparently they're, they, it is different somehow. I, I don't know how exactly. Uh, <laughs> I, I still haven't finished Skyward Sword, so because uh, I am busy with something else. I'll probably play that uh, soon. Um, I have a copy of it. I just haven't played it yet because I am slow with video games. Uh, they said... They said in the thing they want to make it more like the original Legend of Zelda, where you kind of just go off exploring. I mean, have you guys played the NES game? There's, like, no direction. It doesn't get tell you shit. No. Oh, I'm you're, 34 you're... years old. When I was, like, eight, I had two things to do. Stick your finger back in the puddle of mud or play <laughs> Zelda. I don't know if you had an NES. Fuck, I gotta assume these things. Yeah. I didn't, but I had friends that did, so... You know, I spent a lot of time at kids' houses that I didn't particularly like because <laughs> I was all about The Legend of Zelda and its gold cartridge. Um, the the most terrible thing about uh, playing Legend of Zelda on the NES um, is the fact that it is in some I can't remember exactly what would happen, but every once in a while, uh, your game would just save the game would just get scrubbed for some reason. And you'd have to start all the way back over again. And you can't remember where everything was. And I didn't have a strategy guide. So I played Zelda a lot and had to start over a bunch of times uh, when I finally finished it. Um, and they said, new game plus. I was like, no, I'm done. I'm done for God's sakes. I uh, I hate to tell you this, Leon, but I think that might have just been your cartridge slash NES. No, there. I, I read a thing. It says there was. It's very. Uh, it's very common for the the uh, game to be scrubbed if you do something. I can't remember what it was. You mean you like you looked it up on the internet years later and you were like, Aha! I knew it. Yes, many years later, I, I I read a thing. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember saying, yeah. I remember reading something and saying, yeah, that sort of thing happened to me from time to time. That's pretty fantastic. No, that, no. Level, that level of obsession is impressive. I, I, I played the hell out of that game. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun. Not playing the hell out of the game, I just mean, like, looking it up years <laughs> later. That, like, holding on to that, because I still... <laughs> there's still a game. There's a game from my childhood that I'm like, no, fuck you. <laughs> this is, I'm gonna do this one day. I'll tell you something. I When uh, I did uh, become an adult, and then many years uh, after that uh, that threshold, um, only then did I go back and play Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, and beat it. 
because I never could never beat it or figure out how to how to get very far in it as a kid. Because that's another game where that it doesn't really guide you where you're supposed to go. You just kind of have to figure it out. Um, games games were uh, I don't I don't know if harder was was the um, is the right word, but less they were less hand- friendly. friendly. Yeah, they, they were they didn't hold your hand. They were designed to sell strategy guides. Sorry, guys, burst your bubble there. Right, exactly. I guess <laughs> everyone acts like that was some golden age where des- designers trusted their audience, but no, uh, oh God, that, no, no, no. no. It, no. Uh, I do want to say real quick, like, Leon, you mentioned uh, Link is wearing a blue tunic here. A lot of people have been talking. Um, some people thought it was Zelda. I thought it was Zelda at first because of how feminine he looked. He might, I mean, who knows what's going on here. No, he, he, it, it's Link. He's just he's just an elf. They all look a they, <laughs> It's no big well, deal. Well, no, I'm just, sorry, Leon. Racism, they do not all look alike. <laughs> I didn't say they look alike. They all look alike. I said they all look effeminate. I just wanted to say, if this is taking um, a you know a page from Elder Scrolls with more freedom, wouldn't it be cool if you could design your own Link? Like, give him a blue tunic, a red tunic, you know, green tunic, whatever. Right. Maybe make him a boy or a girl, give him different hair. Don't you? I think that would be really so. super cool. I guess so, especially since like the Zelda timeline, which I guess has been released now, shows that there are multiple Links. So there's no like canonical. There is only one Link, and he must always be green, and he must always be male, you know. All, yeah. All I can say is that one of the most important experiences for me playing games these days is to have a personal connection with the the character, the avatar that I'm playing. Be that either through excellent character illustration and storytelling to where I can actually relate to the character or like having unique stories about what happened during the gameplay because of certain design decisions or being able to craft my own character and and actually personally have a hand well they've always said the reason his name is link is because he's your link to the world like he's your, he's your avatar of you like he doesn't have on his own personality i think that's a natural extension to be able to customize him or her maybe that's just my own thing but that no, I, it's I've, totally natural i think it'd be cool um we spent a lot of time on Zelda. They only showed 20 seconds, and we, we spent 20 minutes on it. Do you guys uh, – do we still have Bayonetta 2 and a couple other things? Yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, they, they showed uh, the uh, Wii U exclusive, Bayonetta 2. Uh, looks cool. And also, apparently – and I didn't know this – but apparently if you buy uh, Bayonetta 2, you get Bayonetta 1 in it, and it looks better than it did. And there's also Nintendo costumes for Bayonetta. Yep. That's kind That's- of neat. It's great. But, I mean, even if Bayonetta 2 sucks, Bayonetta 1 is the best action game ever made, so you win. <laughs> like, there's no downside to that purchase. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty good deal if you buy it, if you basically get two for the price of one. I mean, that's that sounds like a good deal for me, you know. I'm always trying to pinch a penny. And there's also, did you, did you care about Xenoblade, Leon? Uh, I didn't even know about it. So there was a game for the Wii called Xenoblade Chronicles. There was a, a huge fan like campaign to get it localized right. because Remember. Nintendo wasn't interested in it. Um, so that game came out. It was a huge success, and now they're making a sequel, same company. We have been calling it X until today, where now we know it's Xenoblade Chronicles X. So they just combined <laughs> its project name with its pre- pre- prequel, I guess. So that game has a name now. It's like a mech-based uh, JRPG uh, made by the people who made uh, Xenosaga and, I guess, Xenogears previously. Those people have been moving from company to company. Right. So that looks great. It comes out next year. Um, cool. Yeah, the only other game I can think of from that conference was Smash Brothers. There's a tournament going on now, um, and they revealed a few more characters. Did you see anything from that that was interesting to you? I, I saw uh, What I saw from Smash Brothers, um, besides the uh, the action figure uh, dealie, was, also, was that apparently... You can just be anyone now. You can. There's, there's a, I mean, which is cool. There's a character customization thing where you can make, basically make a uh, a me of anyone. They showed us um, celebrities. They said you can be Elijah Wood or Ice T. And I actually said on my Twitter, "Well, finally, you know, I can be Elijah Wood." I mean, that's it, that was a, that was a deal breaker for me. If I couldn't be Elijah Wood, I think we all watched North. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think that's kind of neat. I mean, basically, it's not anything new in, a, in, a, in some respects. I mean, it, back on the, like, N64 days, you had create a wrestler stuff for the wrestling games. So this is nothing o- overly new, but it is new for Smash Brothers. I mean, for everyone who's like, oh, I, I wanna, I wanna be, um, 
uh, zero from the Mega Man games, then, well, okay, you, you kind of can because there's, you can f- sort of figure that out through the me, and there's also, and you have like an arm cannon that's available, so you can, you know, it's, it's, there's more customization this time, and I think that's pretty cool. It's baller, yo! And I don't know if, I don't know how smash, uh, you know, close to you guys have been following Smash Brothers, but last year before E3, someone leaked a roster, but we had no way to confirm it. Um, and this is basically proves it's true because it they had um, the Wii Fit trainer, it had a little Mac, it had um, Palatina, who was revealed at the end of today's digital event. So that's basically true, um, which is great because another character on that leaked roster was Crom from Fire Emblem, who has. An amazing ass. If you guys have seen the DLC where he gets, I, I have not. There's DLC you can buy for Fire Emblem, which puts him in a bathing suit. Swear to God, Hot. it's it's the best. So, Smash Brothers looks amazing. Um, I guess now I'm gonna have to play Fire Emblem. Yeah. <laughs> for <Smash> alone. <laughs> you have to buy the DLC. That doesn't come cheap, guys. Come oh. on. <laughs> it's premium. Just like in real life, you've got to pay for that man ass, Johnny. <laughs> You know, it's funny, I do have to pay for that, man ass. <laughs> so, I'm sorry we spent so much time on video games. I know you hate it, Leon. Real quick, you want to wrap up just by saying any, um, like, your favorite, um, comp? Like, <laughs> your, like, most favorite looking forward to game? Was there anything you're like, this is the game of E3 for me? Um, well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a Nintendo junkie, you know. I mean, I'm, when it's time for me to hang up my PlayStation 3, um, and my Wii, because uh, I, I just won't have any more games for it. Um, and and the the games that are announced uh, for coming to come out this year will finally come into my home two or three years from now. Uh, the games I will be probably playing are like Zelda. So the, the the new Zelda, even though we know nothing about it, is almost a guaranteed buy for me because Nintendo got their hooks into me really early at a young age, and frankly. Until they make a bad Zelda game for a home console, I have no reason to think I won't enjoy it. I've never, I've never disliked a Zelda, a Zelda game for home console. I haven't played, I haven't played all the portable ones, but I don't play portable games. Do you like Twilight Princess? Big time. Oh God, Leon! I just played it this weekend. Oh. I could not stand it. Why? It. So many things, from the glacial pacing to the muddy art style, the complete lack of challenge. I tried to lose a couple of boss fights just to see what would happen, and I couldn't. You, I couldn't lose. Well, what a, you didn't you didn't find uh, at least the the later game puzzles to be difficult? No, the puzzles were all dead simple. Hmm. I liked Skyward Sword to an extent. There were sections of it that are super boring, but at the end of the day, I enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, Twilight Princess just couldn't stand it. I was all about uh, that game, but I but it's it's really hard for me to. Uh, I, mean, I just thought I thought it was gorgeous, even though it was uh, let's let's say darker uh, than 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 the uh, brightly color bright colors. I have, no, I have no problem with dark. Majora's Mask is my favorite. That game's dark as fuck. Uh, Twilight Prin- Princess is just muddy. It's just gross and not appealing to look at. I thought hmm, I didn't think that at all. But okay, different strokes. Yep. But yeah, I guess I guess Zelda would be uh, the thing that I want the most. It's our, the the image you just gave me is already my desktop background. <laughs> I'm great. not I'm not joking either. <laughs> no, it's it's a really sweet image. Yeah. Um, Johnny, do you want to say No Man's Sky so we can move on? <laughs> uh, no. I mean, Austin, you know me better than that. I'm really excited for oh, No Man's fuck, Sky. Oh fuck, The Witcher Three. Yeah, you have to. Say Damn, that. I'm so stupid. I forgot they showed that. Yeah, The Witcher Three looks hot as fuck. So fucking hot. <laughs> and all these all these people are all like, oh, Dragon Age Inquisition. I'm like, no, fuck you. I got in fuck trouble on you. I got in trouble on Twitter for saying that Dragon Age is pointless because The Witcher existed. People were like, why not play both? And I was like, because I'm going to die someday, and I'll have a limited amount of time. There I mean, are like so I'm many so RPGs well. I can play. I may very well play both, but the thing is that that uh, Bioware and Electronic Arts has not convinced me that Dragon Age Inquisition is something that I should pick up at launch. Yeah. <laughs> because Dragon Age 2 and Mass Effect 3 both were huge letdowns for me. Those were the last two games that they published. And I'm just, you know, to, to go in again, and, and the thing is that Electronic Arts prices their their PC games above how a lot of other companies price their PC games. Like, if I was to pre-order The Witcher right now, I could get it for, like, 
I think $44 or something, because uh, CD Projekt Red gives me, like, a loyalty discount for owning both The Witcher 1 and 2. <clears throat> and then, like, you know, digital distribution, and they're just kind of like, hey, buy our game, it's great, you know? Yeah. I mean, I could pay... DRM free. Yeah, I could, I could pay more to get, like, you know, uh, the collector's edition, which I might do, because I, yeah, I know that this is the end of the Geralt saga. Uh, and they're moving on to Cyberpunk 2077. But, like, I buy Inquisition, and it's like, oh, hey, come to Origin. I'm like, no, I, I really don't want to unless you incentivize me with a low enough dollar value. <clears throat> and, I mean, Inquisition might come out. It might, get, it might be great, and people might rave about it. And I might be like, okay, well, I'm going to have to play this. But, again, at this point in time, we're dealing with the third game that doesn't have a unified storyline. They're just kind of, like, fucking around in the same world. And I remember that it, it, in Dragon Age Origins, it was like, there's a dragon. Like, fuck. A dragon. And now they're like, yeah, you know, dragons everywhere. Fucking dragons are awesome. We love dragons. And I'm like, no. Mm. You know, you, you made your your fantasy world unique by having these laws in place. And now you're just chasing Skyrim. That's all you're doing. You know? And yeah. and, and Witcher 3, unified storyline, some, like, complicated moral decisions. Tywin Lannister, voice acting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the best trailer. Yeah. So, it, I mean, you know, I, like, and I'm not saying, oh, if you like Dragon Age, you're an asshole. The first game was amazing. The second was <laughs> a, let down, a let down. You know, I, I don't know how to feel about 3. It might be great, but I know how I'm going to feel about The Witcher 3. I know. I don't, I don't want to cut in and cut you off here, but a, a news story just popped up in my feed here. I guess Ubisoft just addressed why none of the uh, assassins in Unity are women. And that's because it takes, quote, double the animations, double the voices, and double the visual assets. So basically it was too much work to add boobs to the character models. Oh, man, what a shame to do work to actually, you know, represent <laughs> at least half of the gaming public. Yeah. Yeah. Also, there was a new Star Fox. We didn't touch on that. They didn't show it in the digital event. Afterwards, Miyamoto said to some people, who were in the room with him, I guess. He's like, hey, Star Fox is real. You guys want to play it? And now they're playing it. So That's cool. That's, so, uh, Austin, you, are you going to say No Man's Sky? I want to say No Man's Sky, guys, but, I mean, they announced a new Kirby game, so it's got to be K Kirby and the Rainbow Curse for me, for Wii U. It's the and sequel I, to Canvas Curse, which is, like, one of my favorite Kirby games. Just I the, totally, just, totally understand that, Austin. Just the title. <laughs> the Rainbow <laughs> Curse. I just, I'm, Even you know, like I haven't, I haven't played all the Kirby games, but I agree with you. I've Either never played a bad one. <laughs> what are you saying, Leon? Even their curses are rainbows. That's how, <laughs> that's how Kirby is. I am yeah. so sorry that I jumped in on that because that was, I that line should have, that should have had headline right there. There are over twenty Kirby games. None of them are bad, and they only get better. It's okay. the best series. I'm sorry we talked about video games so long. Next week we'll talk about sci-fi again or something. <laughs> Guys, you know, we'll talk about TV you know, and 90s movies. And you know, uh, last last week we talked about uh, 90s sci-fi movies, the best ones, and somehow didn't talk about the two uh, greatest 90s sci-fi movies, Jurassic Park and Space Jam. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, those are so obvious, right? Because <laughs> both of them cost a lot of money, and they made tons of money at the box office, so therefore they're not successes. We uh, So next week we obviously have to talk about one of the greatest uh, sci-fi movies of the 90s, and by that I mean uh, Space Jam. I have seen those movies. <laughs> Everyone has, Leon. Good, because we will discuss Space Jam uh, next week. Um, that's the teaser. So now that we've said it, and I'm keeping this in the episode, we have to do it. So, uh, uh, so everyone, uh, thank you for listening to us talk about uh, video games uh, for uh, about an hour now. Uh, this feels like old times. Uh, I'm Leon Thomas, uh, signing off. Uh, Johnny, Austin, anything you want to say before I hit stop? There's never enough time. <laughs>
<laughs> so many more things to talk about, Leon. <laughs> Hug the people you love frequently because it masks your scent. 